Hello, and welcome to Think, Explore, and Learn. In this video, we are going to summarize a very exciting book, Future Proof, Nine Rules for Humans in the Age of Automation by Kevin Roos. Kevin Roos is an award-winning technology columnist for the New York Times and the best-selling author of three books, Future Proof, Young Money, and The Unlikely Disciple. He is also a host of a New York Times podcast about what the internet is doing to us. In this video, we are going to put together key insights from his book, Future Proof, Nine Rules for Humans in the Age of Automation. So let's dive in. Rule 1. Do things machines can't do. Be surprising, social, and scarce. In order to succeed in a world filled with intelligent machines, we need to bring things to the table that machines can't do. Kevin divides these skills in three buckets of things that can be done by humans, but can't be done by machines nearly as well, and those buckets are labeled as surprising, social, and scarce. Surprising tasks involve dealing with lots of uncertain, chaotic, and complicated scenarios. For example, an AI can beat a human at chess, which is a very structured game with the same rules every time. But if you asked an AI to teach a kindergarten class, it would fail miserably. We are much better than machines at what's called zero-shot learning, which is a term from computer science that basically means taking a completely new situation and making sense of it. The second category of jobs protected from artificial intelligence are in the realm of social work, which involves making people feel things rather than making things. These are jobs like nurse, therapist, clergy, teacher, or even bartender and flight attendant. These people are creating experiences rather than objects. Right now, artificial intelligence just isn't very good at tapping into our social desires. The third category of safe from artificial intelligence work is scarce work, which involves rare combinations of talents like critical thinking, compassion, or extraordinary ability to understand people. For example, jobs like the 911 operator. When we have an emergency and call 911, we want to connect to a human, not an automated phone tree, and that's because some things are too important to entrust to machines. We trust humans because humans are good at making sense out of emergencies or high-stakes scenarios. For this reason, scarce jobs are going to be done by humans well into the future. Rule 2. Resist Machine Drift Kevin goes on to state, automation is not only happening in our external environment, such as job places, grocery stores, kiosks at airports, but there is some form of internalized automation taking place inside many of us. This automation seems even more dangerous as it burrows into our brains and affects our inner self changing how we think, what we desire, and who we trust. Social media algorithms based on artificial intelligence are a prime example of this, as they manipulate users into personalized content that can be addictive, one-sided, or less factual. Today, the world runs on recommendation engines. Right now, as we listen to this, billions of people all over the world are using algorithmic recommendations to help them decide what things to buy, which trips to take, which TV shows to watch, which groceries to buy, which plumber to hire, and even worse, which potential romantic partner to date. Author suggests two solutions to resist this machine drift. One is keeping inventory of your own preferences. Keep track of all the choices you make in a day and try to determine which of those are truly yours and which are fundamentally shaped by machine suggestions. Once you have figured out your own preferences and priorities, write them on a sticky note and use them as a reference point throughout your day. The second way to resist machine drift is trying to spend at least an hour a day away from the screens and doing things you genuinely enjoy doing. It could be anything from playing your favorite sports, playing with your pet dog, gardening, etc. The point is to get in touch with your human needs while escaping the web of invincible forces that tug you throughout the day. Rule 3. Demote your devices. The author writes, my phone had once been my trusted assistant, but at some point it got a promotion and became my demanding, hard-driving nightmare of a boss. The new day technologies have fundamentally changed what it means to have a device. They lure us on board with a possibility of endless rewards. How many times have you found yourself mindlessly scrolling through your Facebook or Twitter feed? 
how many times you have been altered to a notification buzz and your instinct is to immediately grab your phone to check. How many of you sleep with your phone inches from your head due to the fear of missing out? Research has shown that this hyper-awareness, constant trickle of real-time updates, and increased dependence on the devices is increasingly lowering our attention span, ability to focus, and making us more anxious and less happier. The author encourages people to reassess their relationship to their devices, which are, after all, the robots we spend most time with and take time away from them. Rule 4. Leave Handprints The author suggests that according to the principle from psychology, known as the effort heuristic, we value things more highly when we think other people worked really hard on them. We like things that require effort from other people. That's why, for example, you can get a very cheap flat-screen TV on Amazon, because flat-screen TVs are made by robots. But if you want a nice piece of art, it's going to cost you more than the flat-screen TV. In the AI world, the thing that we will value is people's time, expertise, and effort. With the rise of artificial intelligence and automation and how we perceive products' value, we're going to see the emergence of a split economy. One economy consists of things that are done primarily by a machine, and then there's this other human economy, which is more artisanal. The research bears this out, that those handmade things are going to become much more valuable in the years ahead. Author gives an example of himself where, as a journalist, instead of just assembling facts, which machines are getting much better at, he tries to leave his handprints by putting more of personal touch in his work by stating his opinions and conveying his personality through what he is writing. He suggests in order to survive the automation world, we need to figure out how to express our humanity in our work. Human touch is what's going to give us our value. Rule 5. Don't be an endpoint. There are basically two types of jobs that have emerged in the last 10 or 15 years. One of them is jobs that are assisted by AI and automation. This would be jobs like radiologists, who are using AI to help them diagnose tumors, because the algorithms are actually more accurate than human judgment. There's nothing wrong with that kind of artificial intelligence-assisted work. In fact, it can be a really good thing. But there's another category of jobs we should be worried about. These are the endpoint jobs, where workers take instructions from one machine and execute them using another. The most obvious examples of these are jobs in places like fulfillment centers or warehouses, where workers are told by an algorithm what to put in which boxes, and they're monitored by algorithms all throughout the process. Endpoint jobs are essentially treating humans as an extension of a machine. These are dangerous jobs, not just because they're very likely to be automated, but because they are turning humans from creative, thoughtful, idea-generating people into automations. According to research, white-collar workers are more at risk from AI and automation. There is a whole industry out there called robotic process automation. It's roughly a $20 billion industry for automating common back-office business tasks like accounting, tax auditing, bill processing, invoicing, and sales projection. These tasks have been done by humans for many years, but now through AI and machine learning, they are being automated at a furious rate. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, corporations are automating jobs in middle management and highly skilled fields, which were previously considered safe from automation. Rule 6. Treat artificial intelligence like a chimp army. The author uses a metaphor, treat artificial intelligence like a chimp army, to describe the danger of over-automating, of placing too much faith in the abilities of artificial intelligence and machine learning, and later coming to regret it. He gives an example of Mike Fowler, an Australian entrepreneur who came up with an algorithm for generating t-shirt designs. It could take popular catchphrases like, keep calm and carry on, or kiss me, I'm Irish, and it could plug words from people's social media profiles into those templates to generate millions of t-shirts that would automatically be listed for sale online. It was a brilliant idea, and he made a lot of money doing it, until one day the algorithm went haywire. It turns out that he had forgotten to take some offensive words 
out of the database that the algorithm used to fill in these catchphrases. T-shirts were appearing for sale that said really offensive things, like keep calm and hit her, or keep calm and rape a lot. When these designs became public, Mike Fowler's career was ruined. Many companies are implementing artificial intelligence and automation plans without considering the potential risks, which can lead to disastrous consequences. This is comparable to letting a group of chimpanzees loose in an office, giving them computer terminals and saying, okay, go to work. We need to be realistic about what artificial intelligence can and can't do, and be really careful before we start turning important tasks over to machines that might not be ready to handle them. Rule 7. Build big nets and small webs. The author says that AI and automation can still disrupt our lives, despite our efforts to prepare. But to, to adapt to this change and lessen the blow, companies and societies can build big nets through policy changes and social programs. One such reform is providing universal basic income. Another one is application of robot tax, wherein the companies will have to substitute payroll tax with a robot tax for each human worker displaced by a robot. Many economists and politicians suggest that U.S. tax laws can be changed to reduce incentives for automation. In response to adapt to the emergence of artificial intelligence, companies like Amazon and J.P. Morgan Chase are offering programs to workers to upgrade their skills to adapt to the new work demands, but effectiveness of these programs is still unclear. The author also suggests building small webs in companies and local communities to discuss and manage the effects of new technology. Airbnb, for example, helped laid off employees during the pandemic to find new jobs by setting up an alumni talent directory. Small webs can also provide psychological support and help workers learn to use new technology. Rule 8. Learn Machine Age Humanities. As Paul Doherty, Chief Technology and Innovation Officer at Accenture puts it, we're training people to do machine things. We shouldn't been doing that. We should be training people in uniquely human capabilities. The author lists practical skills that can help people prepare for the future. First one amounts these skills is attention guarding, which involves avoiding distractions and developing a positive identity through activities like meditation, reading books, and nature walks. The second skill we should develop is room reading, where author states, people who have gotten good at quickly assessing biases of others and modulate their own behaviors according to the need of the situation will be well positioned in the future. Third skill is resting. Author recommends stepping off of the hamster wheel of productivity to rest, turn off your brains, recharge your bodies. This will help prevent burnout and exhaustion and allow you to step back and look at the bigger picture. An example he cites is at Harvard University. Incoming freshmen are now required to take an online course known as Sleep 101 before ever setting foot on campus. The next skill we should develop is digital discernment, wherein we should filter information we consume more effectively to avoid being duped by misinformation. Nurturing strong prosocial, non-cognitive skills such as positivity, empathy, ability to cope with change, and regulating one's own emotions are important than ever in today's world. The author advises tech industries to consider the consequences of new technology before launching it. Other industries using AI, like medicine and law enforcement, should identify flaws and be mindful of user vulnerability. Rule 9. Arm the Rebels Lastly, the author suggests, instead of opposing the technology, it would be more relevant to step into the conversation, learn the details, support the people fighting for ethics and transparency inside our most powerful tech institutions. We need to resist the urge to push artificial intelligence conversation too far into the future, but instead push for the best version of it. To conclude this book's summary, the author writes, historically, technological shocks have been followed with social progress, even if it's taken a while. It's important not to get too discouraged and to remember that artificial intelligence and automation could be unbelievably good for humankind if we do it right. We hope you got some insights from this book to prepare for your future and be on the receiving end of AI revolution.
Do give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you find value in the work we are putting out here on YouTube. Your feedback is extremely important for us to keep moving forward. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.